thanks to be today with us. Hello, Raul. Thank you very much you to inviting me here. Thanks. So uh, my name is Raul Raul Dausa, and I am the project manager of the ICP Agir project, and I will be your host today. For those of you that uh, have learned about this webinar online, I will be explaining in a minute. I will be explaining in a minute what the ICP Agir program is is about. Then uh, guest speaker Alba will tell us how Funlabrada is promoting employment and social inclusion with the Milma project. I encourage everyone to comment and contribute by sharing your experiences or telling us if you have been able to, to use the knowledge that you will gain today. Let me briefly summarize what is the ICP Agir program. ICP Agir stands for International City Partnerships Acting for Green and Inclusive Recovery. This is a European Union project managed by the Directorate General for Regional and Urban Policy, also known as DigiRicho, of the European Commission. The objective is to contribute to the improvement of quality of life in participating cities by promoting sustainable and integrated urban development through the identification of innovative policies and programs. The project consists of 14 different city partnerships between EU and non-EU cities from Canada, South Africa, Singapore, South Korea and Taiwan. The areas of cooperation are three, inclusion of migrants and refugees, circular economy, energy transition, and air quality. Now, let's focus on the area of today's presentation, promoting employment and social inclusion with the Milma project. This is a very important topic for Fuenlabrada, which has a large number of migrants. Other cities in the program can benefit from this interesting experience. Let me thank, thanks, uh, thank Al, uh, again Alba Iglesias to volunteer today to explain us how Fuenlabrada has undertaken this challenge. I appreciate very much that you took the time to be with us today. The floor is yours for the next 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raul, for your kind uh, presentation. I am really happy to be here with you and also to have the opportunity to exchange with you how cities can facilitate access to training and employment for migrants. This was an experience uh, that uh, were uh, put in practice here in Fuenlabrada. And uh, before got in, go, we go into the details of the, of the Milma project, I would like to introduce you my city, it is Fuenlabrada. It is a city located in the south of Madrid, and um, it has experienced um, a quickly uh, growth during the last uh, 60 years. Um, the city go from having like uh, around 3,000 um, inhabitants to uh, to uh, 200,000 inhabitants in just uh, 60 years. So um, it was a consequence of migratory process. At the beginning, uh, it was from um, uh, people was moving from here to Fulabrada from other regions of uh, Spain. But later, during the last uh, 20 years, the, the migratory process was uh, mainly international. So at the end, we can say that um, just a few people are originally from, from here, from, from Fulabrada, even not me, for example. So um, this was uh, something uh, that I think really marked the city and the, and the way it was developing. Uh, but to, it's true that together with uh, the, um, the implement, implementation of social policies and participation uh, policies, it was able to, um, to develop a, a, a strong sense of belonging of the people. So many people here feel like really of Fuenlabrada. However, uh, in spite of this, uh, that I think is, uh, is something that is really wonderful for our, for our city and our, our um, citizens, um, it's true that uh, many studies were showing us that uh, most of people affected by, uh, by social exclusion processes and unemployment were migrants in general even those that um, have uh, has has were naturalized but uh, have an an migrant origin for example so from the center of entrepreneurship from Fuenlabrada, that is an autonomous body that um, uh, worked on employment training and entrepreneur um the city hall decided like to to look for some solutions to uh, like um, face the, this challenge. 
and this was mainly the, the history of how uh, Fuenlabrada uh, was selected in the second call of the urban innovative actions because the Milma project was possible uh, thanks to um, urban, uh, thanks to uh, European contribution, European funds. And um, it was uh, implemented from 2028 until 2021. But um, during the past year, the last year, it was also implemented by uh, our own funds. Um, so uh, at, at the end, we can we can state that the Milma project uh, was proved to be a model of access to employment and retraining, facilitating inclusion of immigrants and contributing to the improvement of the quantity and access to employment opportunities promoting exchange and mutual knowledge between local people and immigrants because it's something key it's not was only for migrants but also for local people that was uh, in a situation of unemployment about uh, why it is innovative or why we consider or the uh, or the european commission consider it's something innovative was because um, it was set to implement 28 trainings itinerary training, but uh, not formal training, but informal. So uh, it was something that was uh, co-created together with the private sector. I mean, were the companies and enterprises that uh, the ones that decided which kind of training were uh, was fine to implement since where there were a demand, an employment demand. And we also mix this uh, training, practical and theoretical training with soft skills and teamwork, since uh, we consider that many people um, that are out of the of the employment um, in, uh, or in an employment um, situation um, was uh, have been also out of how to deal with uh, normal situations in a work. For example, deal with a, in a conflict with some uh, comp uh, with some college, or uh, even look for a job. How to uh, can you deal with uh, an interview or an online interview during pandemic also? And uh, as I told you, Raúl, um, it was not only for uh, migrants. In fact. Um, for uh, 20 people that uh, were were um, part of each training, only the 30% of immigrants of people at least. tried to attract this kind of companies we saw that uh, they were not interesting at all in this kind of projects they had like their own projects and and uh, even with this we had to to get at least seven companies for uh, for each lab at at the end we had more than 100 companies uh, and um, they were not big companies, but uh, small and medium sized companies and they were local and regional companies. It is true that they were not uh, like co-managing a, a busy lab, but they they helped us as much as they could. For example, there were labs that in fact were co-managed, like for example, um, uh, light flooring installations, but uh, other were um, like in many different phases. For example, maybe uh, 
co-designing the contents, uh, providing in training company, identifying like profiles or those um, those soft skills that we had to 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 include in the in the training. Then regarding selection, um, it's it was something that changed since uh, we had like COVID during the the, the project. So um, we had to uh, to work with people that even if they uh, if they uh, were not able to to connect maybe to an interview online, they uh, at the end they had to to complete an an entire training only online because it was the way we could do, we could make during this uh, this pandemic and the lockdown and then we face uh, yes yeah, some challenges uh, social inclusion process and it was something that maybe could not be uh, possible if, if we had an, uh, a flexible project or uh, if this project was not implemented uh, under an, an innovative uh, the, the, the urban innovative actions. Regarding our best practices, uh, not only their path but the group or the team path was something key to facilitate teamwork then uh, we decided also to encourage in spaces for dialogue and exchange away from training since we saw that it's not necessary to talk about integration or uh, or cultural differences but you can maybe maybe implement uh, pr different practices for example uh, singing different birthday songs in the in the celebration of some birthday or uh, um, implementing like cultural breakfast and this was uh, some practices that was like were like facilitating social So that it was also key for us to because at the end you can see that even people is for example from Morocco you have the fa the same uh, challenges in your life like looking for a job maintain your family and this is something that at the end uh, uh, when you see like in other in other eyes um, your empathy like uh, go is is there. And re relating like low labor best practices is uh, creating a support network, not only uh, with your colleges, but uh, with companies, raising business awareness of diversity. Um, sometimes you consider that everyone is uh, aware about diversity and social inclusion, but we have so that never is enough. Like you have to, to do things and not, not think that every everyone is um, is uh, aware as, as as you as you could could want, and the last one was including including soft skills training. It was something uh, key for us because at the end, um, as I said, not only um, not only like um, looking for um, job skills, but also like. Um, day-to-day -day skills like dealing with a company with a a, a conflict or uh, be flexible or this kind of, of skills that mm, not everybody ha had it and in a training you um you have to think about that all also and this is like a summary of um of our project of the minima project um, we had more than 500 uh, participants and more than 20 uh, itinerary training, but I think that it's like um, 
a, a, a good result or a, a good image about um, this whole process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alba. This is uh, very, very interesting. Um, I have some some follow up questions. If you could uh, spare the time, um, what what do you think are the best achievement achievements of this project? If you can summarize. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think that the best achievement of the Milma project um, is not only that we. these resources uh, you cannot do uh, what do. Like uh, maintaining this human approach during the whole uh, process is like something that made a, a difference. Maybe uh, you consider that uh, stakeholders, companies, uh, entities, NGOs are um, are uh, conscious about uh, diversity, but it's never enough. I think maybe it's better if you work before on on generating some narratives, some arguments, uh, to put in practice some some act, uh, some activities. For example, we decided to make a seminar. What, what what is the the future of the project? So what happens now? Alba, I think that this was a very interesting talk, and I hope that uh, the cities that in the Mima project. Thank you very much, Raul. <laughs>